around the mound and found myself confronted by 30 naked people lying near the pit, about 30 to 50 meters away from it. Some of them were still alive. They looked straight in front of them with a fixed stare and seemed to notice neither the chilliness of the morning nor the workers of my firm who stood around. They had to put down their clothes in fixed places, sorted according to shoes, top clothing, and underclothing. Without screaming or weeping, these people undressed, stood around in family groups, kissed each other, said farewells, and waited for a sign from another SS man who stood near the pit with a whip in his hand. An old woman with snow white hair was holding the one year old child in her arms and singing to it and tickling it. The child was cooing with delight. The couple were looking on with tears in their eyes. The father was holding the hand of a boy about 10 years old and speaking to him softly. The boy was fighting his tears. At that moment, the SS man at the pit shouted something to his comrade. I well remember a girl, slim and with black hair, who, as she passed close to me, pointed to herself and said, 23. Who were closely wedged together and lying on top of each other so that only their heads were visible. Nearly all had blood running over their shoulders from their heads. Some of the people shot were still moving. Some were lifting their arms and turning their heads to show that they were still alive. Women and children have died thus, murdered in cold blood. It's understandable, I suppose, that um, some Germans should resent the Nuremberg process and understandable also that the British and the Allied powers should um, defend it. What is that old maxim? My country, right or wrong, but still my country. Now, I'm not trying to justify that ethically, but it is a fact of life that um, people tend to think in that way. I don't think that the Germans um, ever realized or, or considered whether these things were moral or not. Yes, but not only were these acts not discouraged under the previous system, they were openly encouraged. I mean, there was a whole ideology that, um, that made what was considered by others immoral into patriotic acts. It's awfully difficult to think that those who took part, for instance, in the uh, in the establishment and conduct of the concentration camps and the annihilation of the Jews, could never really have thought, if they thought about it at all, that it was a, a good and a patriotic thing to do. Millions upon millions more today mourn their fathers and their mothers, their husbands, their wives and their children. What rights has any man to mercy who has played a part however indirectly, in such a crime. All law is um, created by the victors for the vanquished. All law. It is the majority who the laid out... society in power, or the people society in Society in power who lay down the laws. And I've no doubt that the first person who, in the very early history of our common law, was prosecuted and hanged for murder said, you can't do that to me. It's never been a crime before. What they've got to do, I think, is to look at the principles, not ask themselves who laid these down, but what are the principles? And then ask themselves, are these principles right or wrong? And if they're right, it doesn't matter a curse who laid them down. The murderers are the vanquished. The law makes murder a crime. Society makes it a crime. But the Marxist would also and add that the laws on property of the laws of those in power against those who are out of power, maybe the majority, but that's... Well, I'm not a Marxist, I'm sorry, <laughs> but you won't induce me to enter into an argument about Marxism. <laughs> there was quite a big school of thought in Britain and um, even more so in the Soviet Union when they came into the war in favor of what was called executive action, 
which was that these men should be um, caught. There should be a very short drumhead court-martial, and they would be executed um, out of hand in, in the morning. The Americans were very much opposed to this. Americans in those days, at any rate, um, had a great belief in the rule of law and in justice. That four great nations, flushed with victory and stung with injury, stay the hand of vengeance and voluntarily submit their captive enemies to the judgment of the law is one of the most significant tributes that power has ever paid to reason. I think the British in the earlier days felt that the thing would not have the appearance of justice, that it might be said that this was a tribunal composed of the victors that the defendants would not be given a proper opportunity of um, defending themselves, and that the trial would look rather a bogus affair. I think it was at the um, Yalta conference. Stalin said that the proper course would be to arrest 50,000 members of the German general staff and execute them out of hand. Uh, Roosevelt thought this was a joke. And he said, well, perhaps 49,000. But uh, Winston Churchill took it very seriously indeed. And he said that he would sooner be taken out into the garden and shot at once himself than be a party to such an act of barbarity. May it please the tribunal. On an occasion to which um, reference has and will be made, Hitler, the leader of the Nazi conspirators, who are now on trial before you, is reported as having said, in starting and making a war, not the right is what matters, but victory. Hitherto, everybody had been inclined to feel that if the thing was done in the name of the state, then they who represented the state or who settled the policy would be able to remain in a position of um, anonymity and escape any individual retribution. I drove by car through the Ruhr to Nuremberg and um, it was shocking to see the damage that had been done to so many towns. Also, of course, in London and Liverpool where I'd had to work during the war, there was also very great um, damage. Goering was a dominating figure. He'd lost a lot of weight. His um, uniform fitted very loosely. He was off drugs. He sat at the end of the dock, and one realized at once that he was a very strong personality. And one also realized, I think, that although he'd done terrible and evil things, he had a sense of humor. I don't think it's ever been a maxim of um, law in any civilized society that you mustn't punish A because B has also committed crimes and you can't get at B. What about when B is, uh, is sitting in judgment? Well, that is perhaps unfortunate, but B's crimes were not then in issue. No, as a matter of fact, I'm, in a way, rather in favor of civilians being involved in war. I think the more you involve civilians in war, the less likely you are to have wars. Dresden, Hamburg, these were no doubt um, terrible incidents, but they were the inevitable consequence of um, Rotterdam and London and Coventry and Birmingham and Liverpool and in this part of the world, where I lived at that time, not a day passed without um, German aircraft flying over here. And in this very garden, um, one of our barns and a large area, farm buildings, was completely destroyed. Wage aggressive war must contemplate the possibility that they may be beaten. 
and that they will be beaten by the very methods that they have chosen to use themselves. When you're using they and those, I am addressing a former prosecutor of Nuremberg. For Great Britain, Northern Ireland. And didn't Nuremberg proceed on the assumption of individual rather than collective responsibility? The individuals who are the leaders of the state have a personal and individual responsibility. The great mass of the citizens must, I'm afraid, accept a collective responsibility for that which governments do in the name of the state to which they belong. That was the true view. The Russians ought to have been in the dark as well as the Germans. There's no doubt now that they were guilty of these crimes. Of course, there's no doubt now that they were guilty of a great many other crimes at that time, too. No, you see, at that time, I don't think we appreciated um, sufficiently that that was the case.